Hey there, welcome to today's episode. We have this little package that just arrived in the mail. Thought I'd share it with you guys. Now this is a little MIDI controller. It came from Timu. It's my first time using Timu. And I'll talk a little bit more about that experience as we go through. Just wanted to do a quick unboxing, test this thing out. It is a small MIDI controller that I'm hoping to use with Koala Sampler. And it was the grand total of £13.54. Now, as you may have noticed with the Timu app, you seem to get these offers all the time. This thing popped up on Facebook as a new user deal. If you signed up to use the application, they give you a serious discount. I don't think it's that expensive anyway. I think it's normally about 30 to 40 pounds, but it was on offer for 13 pounds and 54 pence, which seems absolutely ridiculous. Now, this is exactly as it arrived. The box is a little squish, which is a little worrying. Haven't opened this thing yet. Thought we'd take a look at it now. You can see it says SMC pad underneath. MIDI controller. So let's open up the box and see what this thing's all about. I can see here we've got the cable, we've got some instructions, and of course the little MIDI controller itself inside. And I've got to be honest, on the face of things, it doesn't actually look that bad. It's by a company called M-Wave. I thought it was M-Wave at first, but yeah, it's M-Wave SMC pad. The thing about this is that it's technically a Bluetooth controller. It's got a USB-C slot for charging it, so it has a built-in battery. We've got eight endless encoders, 16 pads, and then a bunch of functions. I've got no idea how it works. I'm hoping that it's got a little bit of power straight out of the box. If we press the power switch, yeah. Looks like it does. It really doesn't feel that bad. It doesn't feel particularly cheap. And ultimately, I bought it to go along with Koala Sampler. So let's get this thing plugged into the iPad and see if it works. Okay, so we got the iPad open. Koala Sampler is ready. Let's turn this thing back on. I was trying to conserve the battery. We've got this flashing Bluetooth light, which is apparently how we connect this thing up. We're going to go into settings. And under MIDI, you'll see at the bottom, we've got Bluetooth Connect. So let's just see if it connects. I can see SMC pad. That's always a good sign. Let's try and connect it. It's asking me, do I want to pair? Okay, and apparently that is connected. Now we're going to have to map the MIDI because I haven't done any MIDI mapping in Koala for a while. So let's map MIDI. And if we start with the bottom pad on the left, let's just see if we get something. Yep, okay, that's working. And now with all of the pads mapped in, that's a good start. Obviously, we've got these eight rotary encoders. And what I believe, according to the manual, is that you have two pad banks of 16 pads. And actually, you've got two knob banks as well. So you've got 16 rotary knobs that you can mess around with. I just want to start with some basics. So let's say on the first one up here, I'm going to have that as my sample start. This one here as the sample end. And then I think just for these three, which I'd use all of the time, we've got volume, pitch, and pan. I'm going to put those in a row on the left-hand side, starting with pan at the top, pitch in the middle, and then volume at the bottom. On the right-hand side of the device, there are some buttons here, which I'm assuming we can map as well. So if we go to sequence, and then we take a look, we've got our play button, which I'm going to map to the play button. We've also got pause, but with Koala Sampler, it just uses the one button to play and pause. But we can set up record as well, so let's try record. And I think rather than getting too deep in this particular episode, let's just leave it like that. So let's stop the mapping. The big thing I want to know is what it's like in terms of the Bluetooth connectivity, because normally with these Bluetooth devices, when you're talking about audio, there's some kind of lag. And with this thing costing less than 14 quid. I'm really not sure what to expect. Let's load up a few samples. So we go to samples. I've got a kick drums folder. Let's just load up this one. I'm going to go back to samples. We'll load up a hi-hat. And samples once again, just to pick out a snare drum of some sort. That one will do. We'll move to sample and just make sure these are all one shots. And now is the moment of truth. How does this feel? OK, I can't see any noticeable lag there, which is pretty incredible considering the price of this thing. Now, the next thing I want to know is what kind of velocity we've got here, because it seems like there is some velocity enabled. OK, if I thump the pad a little bit, we are getting a louder volume. You can see a bunch of written information on the pads and we've got velocity one, two, three and four. According to the manual, if we press shift and we choose velocity four, pad 12, that gives us fixed velocity. Yeah, that sounds about right. We've also got other options like note repeat. So I think if you hold this down and press a pad. Yeah, we've got note repeat. Now with the note repeat, you can also change that in terms of the division. So you've got quarter notes, one sixteenth notes, that kind of thing. According to this, you have to do shift note repeat. And then I guess you choose one of the pads at the bottom. So we got one sixteenth notes. Let's try one quarter notes. OK, 
Okay, seems to be working. And one more, let's just do shift, note, repeat, and try 132. Okay, seems to be working just fine. Now there's also some swing options here that can be applied to the note repeat. So let's try that. You have to do shift, note, repeat. This says swing off. Let's try swing one. We'll also set it back to just one sixteenth notes and just see what that sounds like. Let's come in and try swing two. And let's just see what swing three sounds like. Yeah, I can hear some swing being applied to that. There's a bunch of other things that this does, and we're not going to dive into all of those options just now. I need a little bit of time with this. I just wanted to show you this because I thought when it arrived, it would feel very cheap. I didn't think it'd be very good in terms of the lag with the Bluetooth, but I have to say, considering this thing is so cheap, it's got a built-in battery Bluetooth. The pad sensitivity feels actually pretty good. You're only getting two banks of pads. It would have been nice to have seen four, but to be honest, for less than 14 UK pounds, I mean, really, what can you expect? Now, ideally, I bought this to work with Koala Sampler and so far I'm pretty impressed but at some point I will plug this into the iMac because according to the manual you can set it up with your DAW and use a bunch of other settings here we got some other kind of swing tempo rate and if you check on the back of the device there's also a little QR code there and with that you download some software where you can set this thing up as far as that goes it looks pretty good it's working fine on my iMac and from what I've seen with the user interface there is a lot of settings in there now we know you can adjust the velocity sensitivity of the pads but apparently they also have after touch as well and it has the usual functions for shifting up and down the octaves you can transpose up and down and again for the money i'm kind of blown away with this now as i mentioned at the beginning of the video this was on some kind of deal it was a new user deal but if you've ever seen anything from timo it seems like these deals are offered all the time i will say though if i paid like 35 or 40 pounds whatever it was for this i still wouldn't be disappointed i actually think it's a really nice little controller and i've got absolutely no affiliation with mvave or timu i just saw this thing on offer and for the money i couldn't really Really resist ordering it. I'm going to be pretty curious what the battery life is like on this and I also want to know if you can plug it in directly maybe be charging at the same time and just plug it in direct as a controller and I don't wish to end this video on a negative note but I do want to talk a little bit about Timu. In terms of buying this device it was really easy you sign up they've got this application yeah it's a little bit like a weird arcade game where they keep giving you all these offers and wheels to spin but in terms of actually just getting it ordered which I did through PayPal it took approximately a week to arrive and you were kept informed most of the way throughout that process. The problem is that because I used Timu for the first time, one, you will be inundated with a bunch of promotional offers from Timu every five minutes. But also because I'd used that application, I was then offered a bunch of other information about Timu via social media. And it just so happened that on YouTube, it suddenly brought up this video about Timu as a company. Now, I'm a very grown man and I shouldn't really be naive, but I ended up going down a rabbit hole of watching videos about that company. And I have to say, some of it was a little bit shocking. It's my understanding that Timu is a marketplace and you don't buy from Timu as a company, you buy from the people who create the products directly, which is why they can keep some of the prices down. Now I've seen other videos about Mvave and I noticed whoever works for the company had posted on some of those videos saying that whoever was reviewing the product, they were kind of glad that they were doing that. And as I've said from my first initial tests of this, I cannot fault this as a product. And so this isn't anything directly to do with Mvave. But after watching this documentary about Timu, it kind of made me wonder whether I would order anything else in the future. Now, if you could contact Mvave directly and buy products from them, I certainly would. I think this is actually a really nice little product. And as long as it lasts, I think it presents excellent value for money. But some of the other things I saw in this Timu documentary Entry, about the conditions that people were working in, even just strange things about products that had been tested, like kids' clothing and things like that, that had all of these harsh chemicals in them and things. It was actually quite frightening. There's also a big environmental impact because obviously all of these thousands and thousands of products that are hitting the UK and across the world are coming in via these big cargo planes. And as we all know, the planes are killing the environment. Not to mention in the same documentary, there was also talk about how the application was really addictive. They were treating it almost like these gambling apps where they're giving you all of these offers every five minutes in order to get you addicted to spending money on their site. Now, I'm no eco warrior. I try and do my bit for the environment as much as I can. We do our recycling like most households. And in order for products like this to be so cheap or at least get to you so cheap, there has to be some kind of downside to that. And it feels like with Timu, there certainly is. And it also makes you think about your own responsibility for buying products like this. Now, I'm not preaching to anyone. I'm not telling you what to do. But I have to say, 
After seeing this particular documentary, I'm not sure I feel particularly comfortable buying anything via Timu anymore. As I said, if I could have contact with MVave, and I'll look into that and see if there is a website, I think I would happily buy another product from them directly. You guys can let me know what you think in the comments if you use Timu, and I'm going to sign this video off there. As I said, not to leave it on a negative note, I think this is a fantastic little thing, and I can't believe it cost me what it did at the time. But I don't want to buy something like this and then feel this like inevitable guilt about what it cost other people maybe for me to get this at such a bargain price. Anyway, I'm going to leave it there. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Take care and I'll see you in the next one.